Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part two in a short series of videos looking at upgrades to the Simpit. In this video we'll be looking at the stability augmentation system, SAS panel and some upgrades to it, in particular the magnetically held switches. Let's buckle up. The SAS panel was one of the first ones I built as part of the Simpit project going back about five years ago and it replicated the core functionality of that panel albeit that the switches were not magnetically held and that's a key improvement I'm looking to put in place now. So a bit of a treat for myself today as I'll take the time to unpackage one of these switches. And after having a search set up on eBay for quite some years, I was fortunate to come across this small batch of switches at a perfect condition at a reasonable cost. Let's just take a close look at the packaging. Amongst all these details here, what really strikes me is date package February 1968. And in the top right, it mentions a date of May 64. So... I definitely think that this switch and the packaging it's within has definitely been on quite a journey over the years and there's some other dates we can see as it's changed hands in that time and there was another date I saw let's just have a look I think it's at the other other end here just have a look for it September 67 1967 wow so based on these dates, if they are true and correct, then that means, interestingly, that the switch is in the region of 55, potentially up to 60 years old. So to think that this predated Neil Armstrong walking on the moon is quite staggering. So what we'll do now, um, we'll lay this down and let's have a look at opening it up. And something that I learned back from when I stripped down to tornado panels, anything like this, any real aircraft parts, I tend to handle them um, with gloves and also wear a, a mask. Sometimes you can get quite a few dust particles and other bits uh, that are disturbed. So the inside of the, the packaging that's housed this is so metallic and a little bit oxidised by the looks of it. Can't see any loose dust. And here she is. Yeah, first glance looks good. And this is one item that even that wiring and the standard of it, it's not one I'd just cut short. I think in this case, all of that wiring I'll keep in place so again to preserve this item, this switch, so I can reutilize it in this form for anything else in the future if needed. Uh, let's just take a look at it. The other switches that form part of this batch. I opened those previously some years ago at the time I had them just so I could run some tests on them. But I'll go ahead and line them all up now. So it's these items which I'll be installing into the SAS panel. This is what represents the upgrade. So let's take a look at the current SAS panel. Uh, 
Um, from the side profile, we can see that they're just standard toggle switches, which have performed fine up till now, but I've have had that desire to upgrade them for quite some time. And as a point of comparison, the four switches I already have in place, that uh, which function well and they've got a decent actuation to them, the magnetic held just definitely have a whole different feel to them. We've got the EAC switch at the back of the throttle quadrant there. That'll be the last one to go in. So the first one I put in was for the anti-skid switch here. And I'll just come round to the lighting panel. And we have the second of these type of switches in place that was for anti-collision. So the A10C has seven magnetically held switches in total. I have two in place currently. I'll be putting four in place for the SAS panel and that will just leave the EAC switch for the, the throttle. And here it is removed. With the left console being the very first one I did and the focus being on actually producing the, the panels, it was when they came to be installed, it was Quite clear at that point, I needed to extend the width of them so they could just drop onto those rails. So by the time I came to do the right console, I was able to get everything to the, the right width right from the get-go. So they all just dropped straight into place. But there was a little bit of remedial work with the left console. So there's the switches in place. Just need a little bit of a tidy up around the edges of those, sort of where... Let's put a bit of shine on the paintwork, so I'll come to that shortly. As mentioned, um, I'm not looking to trim any of the wire in here. I think I'd want to leave it as is. Um, yeah. And it's time to run some tests, so let's hook it up to the bench supply. So these are rated 28 volt, um, but at 12 volt they hold just fine and of course the voltage could be increased and to a certain extent even decreased and within the range of voltage that can be applied where it's able to maintain a hold the value increasing just really affects the force you have to apply to physically move it. And 12 volts feels about right. But let's now bring the voltage down and progressively decrease that. And let's look at the effect that has. So 10.8 can feel a slight difference there. Still holding, just slightly less force to physically move it. Let's try nine. You definitely feel that is easier to move now. And at what point does a voltage reach where it is simply too low for it to for the coil to hold the switch in that position? I think some historic tests I did, you could operate at five. Once you got to the sort of the three volt it just Yeah, it just fails. Can't maintain itself. So I ran a series of tests previously when I used one for the anti-skid uh, switch. But I, I think in revisiting this, 12 volts just feels right in terms of not just a solid hole, but the feel of when you should you move it by hand um that it, it just has that right force of actuation and with the range of tests i run i crank it up a little bit the other end too and again with the fascias of these panels made out of plastic once you go past 12 volts you don't want um an overly strong 
uh, force required to actuate it because you can almost see it flexing at the plastic. And that's one slight sen sensation that the armament panel borders on in so much as virtually, well, all of the switches in that were real ones for manufactured by Lucas Aerospace and part of the real tornado panel. And they take quite some, as locking levers, quite some force to, to move them. But they were sort of on the edge of what would be acceptable to use with the uh, acrylic fascia. In terms of connectors for the magnetically held switches, I've found that these inline connectors work really well. And I used a fair few of these when doing all of the lighting circuitry um, in the right console that distributes all of the bat lighting for. Um, the whole sim pit. So getting quite far into the uh, build up of the SAS panel. So they're nicely in place, tidied up the front a bit. And let's have a look at the backlighting. Because I don't use a light plate and the backlight I have is, it's on a standoff set back. Sometimes you have to watch if there's very big switches with big rears to them that it doesn't block the lighting but in this case it's cascading through very nicely and it's got a good even distribution. So let's run some tests so this is over IRQ serial and let's just see it in use. That's cool, and it never gets old. Although there is some added complexity in incorporating real aircraft parts, I feel that the ones I've got, such as a landing gear lever, it definitely is worth the time and effort to get that in place. I and mean, the landing gear lever is one of my favourite items within the, the sim pit. Something that's really good with DCS BIOS as opposed to a keyboard encoder is if the position of the physical switch is out of sync with what's happening in the sim, when you, when you first move it, it resynchronizes them and then from there it's all perfectly in line. And at this point I'm just converting it over from IRQ serial to run on one of the RS485 networks. So I've run a number of tests now um, in terms of the voltages applied, the force of actuation, the uh, amount of current draw in their use, um, and also the, the effect of the core being energized for a period of time and the temperature um, through that passage of time. And it would seem after 15, 20 minutes of them being in use, the temperature didn't seem in any test to get any greater beyond that point. We can see a, a range here where I think it tops out around about 27, 28 degrees. And when completed and back in place, this panel will be an interesting one from the point of view of how it's interfaced because the new switches are uh, through DCS BART over an RS485 network. But that's just where I've t put in place some magnetically held switches. Uh, from the original parts of it, the takeoff trim LED and the potentiometer, uh, they're controlled over DCS BIOS IRQ serial. And the other remaining switch is uh, still run by keyboard encoder. And if the whole thing was being built from scratch, it would all just be DCS BIOS. But it makes sense just to leave the other aspects of it as they are. They're all working quite nicely. So I'll go ahead and install this back in place now. And let's take a close up look at that. 
Yeah, definitely looking forward to bringing this online and seeing it in use with the wider simpit. We'll just catch the side profile here. So yeah, by comparison to before, we can see the new switches in place and all of the the wire in there. So we'll go ahead and bring the simpit online and take a look at it in use. And putting this in place, I do need to reseal the gap between the panels here, so that will block out any bleed through of the lighting. And there we go. So, good first test there. And the rest of the panel all looks to be working just fine. Let's just flip those again, and we can see. Let's see that's trigger the master caution. Yep, yeah. let's have a look over at the caution light panel. See where that's triggered. The AC, yep, yeah. and then you've got the SAS pitch and your. Let's go and reset those. But the EAC is still tripped, and this is where the final magnetically held switch will go in the future there. And that would have been flipped too, and then I would have, it would have been then in that position to flip back and that turns off the remainder of the warning lights, the caution lights there. So that's great to be able to tick the upgrade to the SAS panel off the list. Uh, what I have in mind for the next upgrade is to introduce a utility light. So I look forward to sharing that in the near future. Thanks for watching.